Hi guys, this is the next part of my Unreal Engine 5 multiplayer series and today we'll be talking about some of the important classes. Today we'll be covering the game instance in specific and guys by the end of the video if you guys have any questions leave them on my discord server link in the description. We could have a chat about Unreal over there as well. So every instance of your game will have a game instance object. So to just demonstrate what I mean by that, so if I head into my file explorer in the multiplayer tutorial, I'll just browse to that and if I right click and launch the game and if I right click and launch the game again so when I do that you see there are two instances of my game so as you guys can see these are two separate instances of my game running on the same computer so each one of these instances so the one you see on the left and the one you see on the right both have one one game instance object so as soon as you close the game that object is destroyed so now there's only one game instance object which belongs to this game so that's pretty much it so now getting started so the way you actually create a game instance class is right click go to blueprint class and inside of here just type in game instance you should find it over here so let's just call this uh, main game instance so if we open that up this should look like a regular old blueprint but some of the anomalies which you'll see here is that you don't have a begin play if you type in begin play you won't find it the reason is you have to call init over here so you should find event init so what this basically is, is as soon as your game launches, if you have set the game instance to this one, so the way you do it is actually going into your project settings. So type in game instance and then change it to main game instance or whatever you have created. Now inside of the game instance, couple of things here, event in it and event shut down. So this will be called as soon as your game launches and this will be called as soon as the game shuts down. Makes sense, right? So let's say you have some modules which you have loaded in and if you want to unload them manually, you could do them on shutdown or init. Same goes in the C++ version of the classes. Uh, nothing fancy. The important thing about the game instance is that it does not get destroyed between level transitions. What I mean by that is let's say you transition from one level to another which I will show soon. So all your variables and all the other properties which you have inside of the game instance will stay as is. So let's say you wanted to store something like the player's match statistics. You do it inside the game instance and then once the player logs out you would have your own logic to save the things. That's why you may have seen many games which, which tell you not to exit. Uh, and you lose your save data if you do exit so so that's the reason is because it's stored in the game instance and if you shut down your game your game instance object is destroyed so that's uh, basically it so to understand the uses of the game instance it's best understood when you make your own game if you have things such as lobbies you would set them up inside the game instance if you have a session joining system you'd set it up inside the game instance if you have to destroy sessions, you would set it up in the game instance. So in this video, I'll just show you guys how the variables are uh, retained after level transitions. So you guys will understand what that means. And we'll be wrapping up the video. And as usual, link down in the video description is to my Discord server. You guys can join that for any questions. Okay guys, so I have a fairly simple setup here. So on begin play, I just set this test variable string. To a random float and then after five seconds I transition to a new level which I just created it's just a copy version of this one I just removed the walls on this one so that it's identifiable and then after four seconds we just print the string again so if I go ahead and play this level so you see the number printed on the top and now a few seconds later it should print another number again and as you guys can see it prints the exact same number so that's basically it. So thanks for watching guys. If this video was informative, make sure you guys do leave a thumbs up and make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel if you aren't already and make sure you hit the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. But for now, goodbye.